Hi, welcome. So in this video, I'm going to go through a couple of examples about finding orthogonal vectors using the dot product. So we're going to do a little warm up just to remind ourselves how we find a dot product. So let's find the dot product of i minus 3j plus 10k and 2i plus 5j. So we're using ijk notation here, just gives us a little bit of something different to try with the dot product. So to do this, I'm going to immediately convert these into component form. So the first vector is 1, negative 3, 10, and the second vector is 2, 5, 0. That's because there's like a plus 0k on that second vector. Then my dot product is 1 times 2 plus negative 3 times 5 plus 10 times 0. So I'm just multiplying the components together. When I do this, I get 2 minus 15 plus 0, and so my dot product is negative 13. All right, so let's move on to an example where we find a vector that is orthogonal. So let's find a vector that is perpendicular or orthogonal to the vector negative one, two. So as a comment, orthogonal is probably the more formal word here, since orthogonal applies to vectors, and perpendicular is a word we usually use for lines, but I like to think that perpendicular is often a more easily understandable word for us since it's what we know, so I tend to use it when I mean orthogonal just to help you get used to both words. So the important thing to remember here is that perpendicular or orthogonal vectors have a dot product of zero. And this is because if they are perpendicular or orthogonal, they have an angle of pi over two. So cosine of pi over two, which would be cosine of 90, would be equal to zero. So looking at that formula, that is that the dot product is equal to the magnitudes times cosine of the angle between them, that cosine of the angle between them will be zero. So we're going to think about a vector, let's call it x and y, and we're going to do the dot product of it with this vector negative one, two, and set it equal to zero, because we're knowing that the dot product of perpendicular vectors is zero. And my task here is going to be to solve for x and y. Since I'm just trying to find a vector that is orthogonal to negative one, two, I just need something for x and something for y that works. So the dot product, I do negative one times x, that's negative x, plus two times y, that's plus two y, and that's equal to zero. I'm gonna move the x to the other side. I'm getting two y equals x, and this means y equals one half x. So what this tells us is that any vector that has the form x one half x, so I put that one half x in the y position, the y component, any vector with this form will be perpendicular to negative one, two. So we took this dot product with an arbitrary x and y, we set it equal to zero, and we found out that anything of this form x one half x will have a dot product of zero with the vector negative one, two. So this has tons of solutions to it. So we could think of one for x, that would mean one half was y. We could do 10 for x, that would mean five was y. We could do a negative value for x, negative two for x, meaning negative one is y, etc. So there are lots of options for vectors that will be perpendicular to the one we're looking at. We just needed to pick one. So it's nice to draw a picture to confirm for us that this is what's happening. So I'm gonna draw my vector negative one, two, and I'll just draw these other vectors I picked. So I have one, one half, looks orthogonal to me. Then I can do 10, five. So this actually points in the same direction, it just has a longer magnitude. Or I could do the negative valued one. So I have negative two, negative one. This points in the opposite direction, but it's still orthogonal to our vector negative one, two. So these vectors we found are vectors pointing in the same directions, so they're parallel to each other, but they have different magnitudes. 
So the particular way this problem was set up means that there are lots of possible answers to the example. We can make this more precise by adding in a word here. So let's instead say we want to find a unit vector that is perpendicular to the vector negative 1, 2. So here, the unit vector is going to have fewer options for the solution, since we need to specifically find the vector that has a magnitude of 1 for the unit vector. As a comment before we start doing this, you can anticipate getting two solutions. So we have a unit vector pointing along the first direction that had the positive components, and we can find a unit vector pointing in the opposite direction. So I'm going to get two solutions to this question. OK, so to find a unit vector, we still know that the dot product needs to be equal to 0. But now we also know that the magnitude of our vector x, y needs to be equal to 1. So from the work we've done already, I know that I am going to have negative x plus 2y equals 0 and y equals 1 half x for my part with the dot product. So now let's look at the magnitude. So the magnitude of x, y is the square root of x squared plus y squared, and this is equal to 1. So I can square both sides just so I don't have to deal with that square root, and I get that x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 squared. So I'm going to use these two equations, I have two equations and two unknowns, to solve for my variables. So since I have y equals 1 half x, I'm going to substitute in that for y in my magnitude equation. So I have x squared plus 1 half x squared is equal to 1 squared. So distributing, I have x squared plus 1 fourth x squared is equal to 1. And then I have 5 fourths x squared, combining those terms, is equal to 1. This is just algebra at this point, solving for x. So I can multiply by the reciprocal to solve for x squared. I have x squared is equal to 4 fifths. And now I just need to take the square root. So when I take the square root, I'm going to do a plus or minus. And this is where my two different solutions are going to come in. So I have x is equal to the plus or minus square root of 4 fifths, which is the plus or minus value of 2 over the square root of 5. So square root of 4 is 2. And then I'm going to rationalize this to get the square root out of the denominator, mostly just out of habit. And I think it's nice to clean it up. So we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by square root of 5. And so I'm getting my two solutions for x are 2 square root of 5 divided by 5 or negative 2 square root of 5 divided by 5. So each of these x values is going to have a y value that goes with it for the vector. So we just need to find the corresponding y values for each of these x values. So y is equal to 1 half x. So in my positive case, I have y is equal to 1 half times positive 2 root 5 over 5. And then for the negative case, I have y is equal to 1 half times negative 2 root 5 over 5. And so simplifying both of these, I'm getting that y is equal to positive root 5 over 5, and y is equal to negative root 5 over 5. So I can put these together in vectors. It's a mouthful to read, but I'm going to try my best. So we have the vector 2 root 5 over 5, root 5 over 5, and the vector negative 2 root 5 over 5, negative root 5 over 5, are the unit vectors that are perpendicular to the vector negative 1, 2. And so just to really confirm this, I'm going to graph them really quick. I'm using GeoGebra here to graph these. It's an online program for graphing. So the vector negative 1, 2 is the vector I was starting with, and I'm looking for a unit vector that is orthogonal. So when I have it do 2 root 5 over 5 and root 5 over 5, you can see here that I'm getting an orthogonal vector. And you could check if you wanted to determine that this is a unit vector, but the way we did it, we confirmed it was a unit vector by setting the magnitude equal to 1. Then when we put the negative on, we get the vector pointing in the opposite direction, and this one would be orthogonal as well. All right, that is our process for finding orthogonal vectors, either just any vector that's orthogonal or a unit vector.
Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.